we've now got some sort of neurophysiological evidence that other animals can repeat in their minds experiences that they had in the past, or repeat in their brains, I should say, because we don't really know how the mind of an animal works, except that we think it works through the brain. And we can also record in activity in an animal's brain what looks like uh, a plan, something that it's going to do in the future. But these things are very simple. Uh, usually it's l r imagining trajectories through, uh, through a maze or through a territory, uh, or even imagining a future path through some territory. But we populate our own imaginations and memories with much more than just trajectory through mazes. We imagine uh, people, events, emotions, places. So I think what's happened in humans is it's become much more complex and much, possibly much more important. I, I think what is really different about humans, though, is sharing. In other words, we share our memories and our plans and our stories. And that comes about because, as far as we know, only humans have language. Language in the sense of putting together stories, putting together accounts of things, putting together sequences. So, um, and we're utterly dedicated to sharing. I mean, I'm sort of doing it right now. So we use language to, to construct uh, mythologies, um, stories of heroes, detective stories, um, children's stories. So I think it's the sharing that makes humans different. And of course, also through language, we, we store. We store hundreds and hundreds of stories. We have libraries and, the, and Google. Uh, and uh, so one of the things that we humans do, we, we operate as groups. So we share our stories, share our memories, share our plans. And there's no evidence of that in other species that I'm aware of. It could well be that other animals do have wandering minds, imaginations, but we don't know because we can't ask them. So we have to have very clever techniques to ask whether our dog really is, you know, thinking about something else or imagining other dogs or imagining being in different places. And one of the challenges, I think, in evolutionary theory is to figure out why or how, how, to, how to ask a dog what it's thinking about or a rat or a monkey or an ape. Well, the biggest challenge is to try to understand where language came from. I think we are very social creatures, so it became very important for us at some point in evolution, not just to have imaginative minds uh, to, to create things, uh, but to share them. And that's added enormously to the variability of human culture. But it's come about through our desire and capacity to share. And the most obvious example of that is language. Some people, of course, like Noam Chomsky, thinks that it was a, a sudden mutation that um, descended only upon humans. And it all happened in a, in a particular event at some point in history. I think that's nonsense. So I'm trying to understand how we do get into the mind of another animal and how we do understand how we came to be like we are.